Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for kind introduction and uh, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my honor to have an opportunity to deliver a speech at the Asian Pacific Cardiovascular Intervention and Surgery 2018. As you can see slide, my topic today is the, regarding the heart failure management, which has been improved substantially over three decades but not satisfactory yet. So do we need another prim paradigm shift for a med needs of heart failure management? <laughs> heart failure is a complex clinical syndrome that results from structural or functional impairment of a ventricular filling or ejection. And also heart failure is a progressive condition with intermittent acute decompensation leading to poor prognosis despite of established guideline-directed therapy. Dr. Paul D. White uh, mentioned the only digitalis and the rest for the treatment of heart failure. In his textbook of cardiology in 1929, and also Dr. Hurst uh, mentioned in his textbook published in 1974, decreased the physical activity, digitalis, and thiazide or furosemide with potassium supplementation for treatment of a moderately severe heart failure. Ventricular filling in general depends on the interaction of four components that regulates volume of the blood expelled by the heart, contractility, preload, afterload, and heart rate. The first three components determine the volume of blood expelled from, expelled with each beat, which is a stroke volume. In failing heart, the, as contractility decreased, preload increases because heart cannot eject the blood efficiently, and afterload also increases due to vasoconstriction in order to deliver adequate blood to vital organs. Because of such hemodynamic changes causes, symptoms, and signs of heart failure, diuretic was used to reduce preload, inotropics to increase contractility, and the vasodilator in order to reduce afterload. This is a cartoon describing hemodynamic hypothesis of heart failure progression. Until early 1980s, heart failure is thought to progress due to hemodynamic derangement, especially due to increased afterload induced by peripheral vasoconstriction, which can further reduce myocardial contractility uh, or ventricular function. This slide shows a ventricular function curve in normal white line and failing heart red line. In failing heart, venous vasodilator reduced preload with a little compromise of cardiac output in addition, arterial vasodilator can increase cardiac output by reducing afterload. As such effect of a vasodilator seems favorable in failing heart, a randomized clinical trial was performed whether vasodilator can be beneficial in improving long-term outcomes in patients with heart failure. Vasodilator in heart failure trial was clinical study in order to evaluate effects of a vasodilator therapy on mortality among patients with chronic congestive heart failure. 642 men with impaired cardiac function and reduced exercise tolerance who were taking digoxin and diuretic were randomly assigned to receive additional double-blind treatment with placebo, prazosin, and hydralazine plus nitrate combination. Addition of hydrolazine and nitrate in class 2-3 chronic congestive heart failure patients were associated with 23% reduction in mortality at three years. However, prejudicing group failed to show beneficial effect in spite of hemodynamic improvement compared to the placebo group. One of the most relevant findings of this study is that the effect of a medicine on symptoms and hemodynamics do not correlate well with the effects on overall survival. The result of this study 
which is a different outcomes with a similar hemodynamic improvement suggested that in addition to hemodynamic component, there might be another factor in heart failure progression. One year later, consensus study was published showing reduced mortality and prolonged, with a prolonged administration of ACE inhibitor, enalapril, in class 4 severe heart failure patients who received the digitalis, diuretic, and the conventional vasodilators. Enalapril reduced the mortality by 31% at 12 months. In solved study, enalapril also tested uh, to reduce mortality and heart failure hospitalization in mild to moderate heart failure. In solved prevention study, enalapril, however, failed to reduce mortality in asymptomatic left ventricular dysfunction. However, enalapril reduced development of clinical heart failure symptoms or need for hospitalization. As shown in this slide, sympathetic activation represented by plasma norepinephrine concentration is related to increased heart failure mortality. Also in solved study, neurohormones such as uh, plasma norepinephrine, plasma renin activity, uh, atrial natriuretic peptide, and arginine vasopressin were increased even in patients with asymptomatic left ventricular dysfunction as well as symptomatic heart failure. And degree of neurohormonal activation was well correlated to the degree of heart failure or left ventricular dysfunction. Final blow to terminate the hemodynamic hypothesis of heart failure progression was the result of the PROMISE study, which evaluated inotropic agent, oral milinone, in severe heart failure patients. In contrast to favorable effect of enalapril in consensus trial, long-term oral milinone therapy increased the mortality 20 8% all-cause mortality and 34% cardiovascular mortality and morbidity despite of the beneficial hemodynamic and symptomatic improvement. This result, all these uh, results supported neurohormonal activation as the principal pathophysiologic mechanism for heart failure progression and outcomes rather than hemodynamic mechanism. As the cardiac function decreases, neurohormones are activated. In acute pace, activated neurohormones can act as an adaptive mechanism in order to keep hemodynamic stability. However, prolonged chronic activation induces further myocardial damage and decreased cardiac function through maladaptive mechanisms such as hypertrophy, remodeling, and apoptosis. One of the major neurohormone system activated in heart failure is the sympathetic nervous system. Under hemodynamic theory, beta blocker was contraindicated in heart failure management due to negative endotropy effect. However, all clinical trials using beta blockers, such as cavedilo, bisoprolo, and metoprolo, show the risk reduction of 34 to 65% and supported neurohormonal hypothesis of heart failure progression further. Rall's study also demonstrated the beneficial effect of spironolactone, which is antagonist of another neurohormone, aldosterone. Although blocking of major neurohormones, such as renin angiotensin system, sympathetic nervous system, was successful in a few clinical trials. However, several other trials using additional neurohormonal inhibition or adding natriuretic peptide have been failed to show beneficial effect. Most disappointing study recently was atmosphere study, where addition of aliskiren, renin inhibitor, to enalapril led to more adverse events without an increase in benefit in patients with chronic heart failure. Failed clinical trials 
which tried more complete neurohormonal inhibition, suggested need for another way or paradigm in addition to just inhibition of neurohormonal activation. Following myocardial injury or vascular stress, two types of neurohormonal changes contribute to evolution and progression of heart failure. One is the increased activity or response to the maladaptive mechanisms. The other is the decreased activity or mechanisms uh, response to uh, adaptive mechanisms. Theoretically, inhibiting bad mechanism and enhancing good mechanism can be more beneficial than inhibition of both bad and good mechanisms. Therefore, in paradigm heart failure study, angiotensin receptor blocker was used for suppressing male adaptive mechanisms of renin angiotensin system, and uh, neprilizin was used for enhancing adaptive mechanisms through blocking natriuretic peptide degradation. In paradigm heart failure trial, LCG-696, angiotensin receptor, neprilizin inhibitor, which is a combination pair of angiotensin receptor blocker valsartan and neprilizin inhibitor sacubitril, was compared with analapril in class 2, 3, 4 chronic heart failure. The trial was terminated prematurely because LCG-696 was far superior to enalapril in reducing the risk of death and hospitalization for heart failure. Paradigm heart failure study shifted the paradigm of heart failure management from neurohormonal inhibition to neurohormonal modulation because improving neurohormonal imbalance not only by suppressing bad neurohormones but also enhancing good neurohormones, such as natriuretic peptide, can induce additional benefit over neurohormonal suppression only in heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction. Heart rate modulation is another area of managing heart failure, as baseline heart rate at last is related to cardiovascular risk. Shift study evaluated the effect of heart rate slowing agent, ibabradin in chronic heart failure. As you can see on the left panel, Ivabradin reduced the primary composite endpoint by 18%, uh, especially in patients with heart rate equal to greater than, equal or greater than 77 per minute with a full beta blocker use. As I didn't mention the role of device therapy uh, in heart failure management, However, this slide summarizes the current guideline of the heart failure management. Although beta blocker, ACE inhibitor or ARB, and mineral corticoid antagonist, receptor antagonist are the first line of uh, uh, medical management, ACC and AHA, also ESC heart failure guideline, recommend angiotensin receptor uh, neprilizin inhibitor uh, recommend the ARNI switching ACE inhibitor and the ARV if a patient is symptomatic with the first-line therapy. Bypass surgery, digoxin, uh, ivabradin, and hydrolyzin nitrate combination can be also used in special population when indicated. Despite of the major advances in heart failure therapy over the last three decades, the prognosis of heart failure is still very poor and worse than most of uh, cancers and the five-year mortality reaches up to 40 to 50 percent. You can see this slide, event rate, as well as the mortality rate of myocardial infarction in UK, which is uh, one of the most common cause of a myocardial injury leading to heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, have been reduced uh, dramatically. However, as hospital discharge for heart failure is increasing continuously, shown in this slide, heart failure is increasing, and we are facing imminent worldwide heart failure epidemic, mostly due to increasing aging population. Although still there is a 
substantial unmet need in the management of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. However, huge and urgent unmet need are present in the management of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and acute heart failure. All the clinical trials so far has failed to improve outcomes of current neurohormonal agent or investigational drugs in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and acute heart failure. Therefore, we have to find a new target based upon pathophysiologic mechanisms of heart failure progression. For example, new target regarding uh, neurohormonal aberration or uh, loss of a novel target for recovering loss of contractile capacity, which is the one of the fundamental components of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Also in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, new hemodynamic or molecular target should be sought. There are several neurohormonal targets under investigation, such as soluble guanylate cyclase activator, verisiguat, or new mineral corticoid receptor antagonist with improved cardiac selectivity. New GI potassium binder is not a neurohormonal modulating agent. However, this can facilitate a RAS inhibitor or MRA use by preventing drug-induced life-threatening hypokalemia. In order to overcome the loss of contractile capacity, various approaches are underway, such as regenerative therapy using stem cells, drug-enhancing contractile function without increasing myocardial oxygen consumption, such as uh, myosin activator, uh, gene therapy, and uh, Antagonist of a certain microRNA related to cardiac contractility, antagomer, uh, with the technical development, mechanical support like ELVAD as a destination therapy is another promising area. This slide shows the novel approach for heart failure treatment under investigation from preclinical stage to phase four. We have to wait to the result we have to wait the results of a new therapeutic modalities in the near future. Paradigm of heart failure therapy has been shifted over uh, several decades and can be divided roughly into four phases. Until 1960s, heart failure was managed rather empirically with a diuretic and digoxin to control symptoms. And in 1970s, uh, there was a, a heart failure was managed under the concept of the hemodynamic derangement. Uh, since uh, 1980s, uh, treatment paradigm shifted from hemodynamic concept to neurohormonal paradigm based upon the result of a large randomized clinical trials. Considering large unmet need of heart failure therapy, especially in acute failure and uh, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, we, have to, we need another paradigm shift and expect molecular and regenerative paradigm using gene, stem cells, as well as novel pharmacological agent. Not only drugs or devices, but monitoring and care technique should also be changed. Connected care programs including remote monitoring, was proven to reduce heart failure aggravation and admission significantly. Champion trial, which monitored the pulmonary artery pressure with implantable sensor, was effective in reducing heart failure readmission in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction as well as preserved ejection fraction. We also have to pay more attention to the prevention of heart failure. A few clinical uh, studies demonstrated that primary prevention of heart failure is possible through prevention and treatment of risk factors like such as hypertension, coronary artery disease, and diabetes with a certain pharmacological agent. We also try to reduce 
worsening heart failure and the heart failure readmission, which is related to adverse outcomes through guideline directed therapy, multidisciplinary care, home monitoring, and personal approaches, and so on. Uh, in Korea, we have uh, two major large heart failure registry. First one is from the 2004 uh, to 2009. Uh, we enrolled 3,000 patients, and from 24 hospitals uh, throughout the nation, with a median follow-up of 1.7 years. We could obtain a lot of valuable information and many publications from the first registry. Second registry started from 2011 and recruited 5,625 patients for three years and planned follow-up for at least five years until end of this year. Compared to the first registry, new registry enrolled acute heart failure only from the 10 representative university hospitals and try to minimize missing data and follow-up loss. Also, we get a complete mortality data of every patient from national statistical data. Through the registry data, we could not, on, we could not only get an insight of acute heart failure, especially in Korean patients, but also obtain a few valuable information which is published in high-level journals such as uh, Jacob's relationship between untreatment blood pressure and mortality, or relationship of a thought to diuretic time to clinical outcome. We look forward to getting more data and interesting findings from the registry. Uh, in summary, ladies and gentlemen, uh, paradigm of heart failure therapy has been shifted based upon randomized clinical trials result and be changed further through better understanding of a pathophysiology of heart failure development and progression. Huge and unmet need are management of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and acute heart failure. Prevention of heart failure be emphasized through control of risk factors and identifying and treating patients with high risk of developing heart failure. Multidisciplinary team disease management program, telemedicine, and the personalized approaches be implemented uh, more widely. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, patience to hear uh, broken English. Thank you.